This app mostly works, but it has one fatal flaw. Any data we add to the app gets wiped out when the app is restarted, which makes it basically useless for tracking names of people we've met over time. To fix this, we've got to upgrade the initializer for our prospects class that loads data back from user defaults, and then save it back to there when we make changes. Now, this time, it's actually fairly straightforward because uh, our people array, this thing here, is an array of prospect objects. And that class already conforms to Codable. It's simple enough, it conforms just by saying, please conform. We're gonna, I haven't got to write our own Codable implementation here. And so we can get most of the way to our goal by making three small changes. First, we're gonna update the initializer. So it loads data from user defaults where possible. We'll then add a save method to here, the same prospects class, that will write data to user defaults when it's changed somehow. And then finally, we'll call save whenever our data changes. For example, when we toggle the prospect down here. Now we've looked at all the code through this previously, so let's get to it. This is really just practice. We already have initializer here for our prospects class, so we can update it. We can say uh, here, if let data equals user defaults dot standard dot data for key, save data. So if we can find the key named save data in our user defaults, then if let decoded equals try question mark, JSON decoder dot decode array of prospect dot self from that data. So if we can read an array of prospects from our save data, great. Our people array equals that decoded array and then return. Otherwise, we're still here, no save data, MD array by default. So that's how we say, uh, load data back from user defaults quite nicely. As for the save method, this is the same thing in reverse. So we'll say func save. If let encoded be try question mark JSON encoder dot encode some people. And then user defaults dot standard dot set encoded for key saved data, like that. Now our data is changed in two places. We've got to make sure we call this new save method always, to make sure the data is always written out when it changes. The first is this toggle method for our prospect class. We go ahead and tell Swift why we're changing, modify the Boolean, and then once it's done, call save, write out our new data. The second is in the handle scan method of our uh, prospects view down here, boom. Because we're calling append on our people array of our prospects. We want to say directly below that prospects.save. Write its changes out here. Now, if you run the app again, you should see any contacts you add will remain there in between app runs. Keeping in mind, if you kill the app very quickly and come back to it, use the defaults where I've had time to synchronize. Let's try it now. So I'll uh, tap, bring example me, I'll go to the home screen, usually a little kick for user default, save things out, and then I'll run it again. We should see, boom, there I am. And I can go between the two states, of course, if I go to here and say I am contacted, I'll now be in this array over here. Let's go to the home screen again, relaunch the app perhaps, hopefully. Uh, I'm still there. I did it too fast. <laughs> That's a good example of doing it too quickly for user defaults. It really isn't great at, at synchronizing sometimes. You've got to give it a couple of seconds. Um, keep in mind, they aren't running from Xcode, of course. And so they won't have the same problem we do, be able to kill apps and relaunch them. Go on, give it a little kick. You can do it. Okay, there we go. That was slow enough to make user defaults work. That's a good example of uh, uh, the problems you can hit with user defaults. Anyway, you can see it saving and loading correctly, which is great, so we could easily stop here. However, this time I want to go a stage further and fix two other problems. First, in our prospects class, we've had to write this string, save data, here and here. So in two places, which again, might cause problems in the future if the name changes or needs to be used in more places or whatever. If you have to write save data, save data, save data, da, 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 in lots of places it gets very confusing and very fragile. Lots of room for making typos and more. So we'll fix that. 
Uh, and second, having to call save over here in the prospects view isn't really great either because our view shouldn't really have to know about the internal workings of our class. You know, our data models over here and our views here, it can request data from there, but it shouldn't try and save data from there. And so it's not great. Now to fix the first problem, we can just make a new constant inside prospects to track the save data name. So we'll say, uh, let save key be saved data like that. And now we can write for key, save key, save key. And then again, for key, save key like that. So the all point is the same value. It makes it a much, much nicer way to read and write data rather than type the same string again, again, again. Uh, and then think about it, this approach is just safer all round because we haven't got a chance of having lowercase s, lowercase k, for example, simple typo, avoid duplication and so forth. It's just better all round. Anyway, as the problem calling save, this thing here, this is actually a deeper problem because when we write code like this, prospects.people.append person, we're breaking a software engineering principle known as encapsulation. And as you develop more swift skills, again, I want to kind of keep your brain focused on next steps and getting better at writing code and building better, bigger projects. And the basic idea of encapsulation is that we should limit how much external objects can read and write values inside a class or a struct. And instead provide methods for reading called getters and methods for writing called setters. Uh, and in practical terms, this means rather than writing prospects.people.append person, so get my data model, get its array inside there and poke values inside there directly from our view. Instead, we want to write prospects.add some person. And the result will be the same. Our code will still add a person to the people array and call save, but now the implementation is hidden away. We haven't got to worry about uh, how it actually works. And this means we could switch the array to be some other kind of sequence, for example, and prospects view, uh, prospects, sorry, prospects here wouldn't care. Wouldn't care how it works. You know, prospects view itself wouldn't break. As long as the um, add method still exists in our prospects class, the rest of our code is happy. Um, of course, it also means we can add more functionality to the add method over time, make it bigger and more complex, perhaps more logic in there, without having to cram in all the views that use uh, the adding functionality. And so what we're going to do is back in prospect.swift, add a new method here, which is add a prospect, like this. And let's do the same thing, people.append, that prospect, and then call save, just like we had before. Even better, with that in place, we can now add some extra access control, which means rather than modifying our people array directly, we can say it's at published, private, set. You can read people freely, go for it. Don't try and write people. To do that, you've got to use our add method. And that's important because they don't poke around in the people array directly by appending, appending, appending. But if we get to call save, we've got a problem. That's no longer possible because they've got to use the add method instead. And so we can now go ahead and say, uh, you've got to call add. We can go even further. We can say, actually, saving, don't, don't call save. We call save. We call save down here and we add stuff and we call save down here and we toggle stuff. But that's inside the prospects class. No one else should call save. So we can say private func save. Don't even allow other parts of our code to call save directly. Save should be done only when data is actually changed in one of these two methods. So again, this is about building up your skills as you come further and further in your swift career. We're just locking down our code so that we can't make mistakes by accident. The compiler simply will not allow us to modify people, will not allow us to call save from externally. It won't work. In fact, if you try and build the code right now, I press command B, you'll see, we'll get bang. You can't use append, bang. You can't call save, it's not allowed. So it's protecting us. It's stopping us from doing these things. It's forcing us to say prospect.add that person. 
which is what you want. I'll do the right functionality every time. And so what we've done is twofold in terms of our fixes. We've moved away from having the string save data in multiple places, which is a great, great way to avoid bugs in your code. But then we've had encapsulation. Don't poke around my directly, my array directly. Call the add method, I'll do it, and I'll make sure it's always saved. And these are great steps towards building better software. Now I should say, in the challenges for this project, I'll be challenging you to move away from user defaults. I instead move across to writing JSON files out using Codable and the user's documents directory. That's for later on though. Here we have user defaults and it works well enough.